Get rid of it off the top. Oh. Board ship to cruise between Los Angeles and... Good morning, Prime Minister Trudeau, who is presently doing his imitation of Joe Clark on his world trip, is credited with having said on one occasion that he came into Confederation to save Quebec and that somebody else would have to save the West. Well, here's what might happen to the West if a man and his organization in the studio this morning have their way. They could split the country. Elmer Knutsen is his name. Rancher, businessman, farmer, and as far as I can see from here, he'll argue with me, a separatist. Also in the studio this morning is a man who is fighting hard with Ottawa, but who is, I believe, still a committed federalist. He is Bob McClellan, the energy minister for the province of British Columbia, and he's going to tell us why he's collecting extra money from us on our gas bills and not giving it to Ottawa until a court decision is made on a certain action. First, Bob McClellan, after the break. One must have a little giggle sometimes before one starts a heavy interview. So to Mr. McClellan, I'm going to say, is it not a fact, Bob, that you were once a radio announcer in Langley? Guilty. Is it correct that you are about to leave the cabinet to take up a hotline show in Chilliwack? Not guilty. Why not? The money's not good enough. Everybody else I'm, is doing it. I'm in it. politics for the money, you know. And you're going to stay in politics? No, I'm going to stay in politics uh, for a while anyway. I'm not, a, I'm not a career politician, but I'm going to be around for a little while. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, I'll be running in the next election. How little a while? Well, that depends on other people, not me. Anyway, poor old Rafe. Eh? Well, Rafe, uh, you know, we have, uh, every one of us has uh, two responsibilities. One's to our public life and one's to our private life. And uh, sometimes you make a decision that you think is best for your private life. Let's and I think that's what Rafe has done. Let's get down to business. In November the 1st, you put up everybody's consumer gas bills in this province by 30 cents a thousand cubic feet and you are now collecting that money. What are you doing with it? Well, at the present time, Jack, uh, we're putting that money into a separate uh, trust account. Hydro is putting that, Hydro is putting that money into a separate trust account, uh, interest-bearing, and it will be held until the determination of, uh, of the diff differences that we have with Ottawa over its excise tax on uh, natural gas. When it's so perfectly clear in the BNA Act that Ottawa has the power to impose this tax, how dare you do such a thing unless you're bound and determined to continue your battles with Ottawa? Uh, how dare I do what? 
hold back the federal tax which is being levied by them. Well, you're saying that it's clear that Ottawa has the right to impose that tax? So the well, feds say. Well, of course, so the feds say, uh, but we say that first of all, there is no law in place at the present time which imposes that tax. There's simply a motion on the order paper which uh, may or may not be passed by Parliament, may be changed by Parliament before it gets passed if it does get passed. And secondly, uh, there's more than one section of the British North America Act. Uh, there's a lot of sections, and one of those sections, uh, uh, f uh, first, of all, uh, uh, first of all, to go back to our entry into Confederation, British Columbia in 1871 was guaranteed the right to its own resources. That included the exploitation and development of those resources and the control over them. And secondly, the BNA Act also says that uh, uh, the federal government cannot directly tax another government, one of the, prov one of the provinces. And uh, our contention is that uh, under that section of the Constitution, we're being uh, uh, illegally taxed by uh, federal government, even if that motion is passed. How much money is involved? Well, there'll be a uh, total probably uh, for the public, for, for hydro, of around $150 million between now and 1983. Which is a big kick in the teeth to your budget. Oh, it's a tremendous assault on our budget and our opportunity to collect money to pay for the services that we require. You know, you know you, people have to remember, Jack, that we've always used our natural resources as a means of gaining the kind of revenue that we need to supply our social services. And uh, if somebody comes along and just takes a chunk out of them, uh, you know, that's a, that's a tremendous disruption to the way in which we've planned uh, both our economy and our delivery of social services. More than that, the increased price of the gas at the border is hitting very hard on your BC Petroleum Corporation revenues. Well, that and other things. Uh, of course, that's a separate issue from, uh, from the domestic gas prices. But uh, yes, uh, we've had a tremendous shortfall in this past year based on a number of things. One of them is a a, a, tr a, a real glut of American gas on the market now. They're finding gas uh, like crazy in the United States because the economic climate is so good. And they've deregulated and, uh, them. And they've completely deregulated their, their oil and gas industry in the States. They're finding gas. That's a short-term situation. There's also a glut of, uh, of the heavy fuel oils available too. And that hits our customers more than any other uh, producing province because our customers in the Northwest United States are able to use that heavy fuel oil which gets sent out of California mm -hmm. because California's environmental regulations are so strong. But you have another embarrassment. You have been hinting strongly, your government has, and it's been expected that you are going to increase on your own hook the price of the gas to consumers here because as I recall what you told me the last time, you've been subsidizing the consumers of natural gas in BC by something like a hundred million dollars a year. Is that not correct? Yes, that's correct. When will you therefore, are you not being prevented from raising the price on your own account to the consumers in BC? Well, I think uh, realistically there will have to be some increase in the domestic price uh, for British Columbia uh, in, in, for natural gas. Uh, we uh, were subsidizing uh, natural gas to our domestic consumers, mm -hmm. uh, partial, well, primarily through the sale of uh, export gas. And uh, that's a situation that I believe will always prevail in British Columbia. We will always attempt to keep the price of gas at reasonable levels for British Columbia consumers. And we would hope we'd be able to pay for it through other sales. But uh, as I told you last time, Jack, uh, I think the hearings were just about to begin by the uh, British Columbia Utilities Commission. Those hearings uh, uh, were kind of thrown into a cocked hat because of the National Energy Program. And we've had to uh, hold off a bit in order for producers and others to get new submissions in mm -hmm. because of the impact of the Federal Energy Program. But I expect that we'll get a report uh, from the uh, Utilities Commission within the next six weeks or so, and I don't doubt that, that there will be a recommendation for some increases. I don't know what the magnitude of those increases within will be. Within six weeks, you expect a recommendation about an increase in the price of domestic gas to consumers on top of the 30 cents increase as of last November? Yes, that's correct. Well, how much will it go up, do you no, think? No, I, ha I have no idea, Jack. Uh, uh, I know that it's uh, seriously underpriced at the present time. Uh, uh, you see, we, uh, the problem is here we, we get, keep getting kicked in the teeth by, peop by things over which we have no control. We just had the National Energy Board, for instance, uh, approve another uh, cost of service increase for rest West Coast transmission. Who are your that carriers? Comes, they're our carriers. We have no control over them. They're controlled by the National Energy Board, their prices, their regulations, and uh, it's passed on simply to us so that's as consumers. When, when they add on the 30 cents on the, the energy program, which you say is not yet law, 
and they give the increase in the allowance to West Coast transmission, that all comes out of hydro revenues and out of your revenues. Yes, out of, uh, out of uh, well, for natural gas uh, in terms of the uh, West Coast, it comes out of British Columbia Petroleum Corporation. What's the revenues? climate like with your opposite numbers now in Ottawa? Because Boussier, the Minister of State Finance for Finance, was quite blunt the other day when he said, hey, you got to pay McClellan. You can't hold back this money. Well, uh, you know, I guess he was, uh, he was reacting uh, in an acting position at the present time. I don't think Ottawa has yet formulated a position. Uh, McKechn yesterday, as a matter of fact, said that they hadn't decided how to deal with uh, our position. Uh, I'm not positive, but I understand uh, by news reports yesterday that uh, Alan Blakeney of Saskatchewan has also indicated that they will not be remitting the tax. So there are so, you three know, of you really got your feet stuck down. Well, Alberta has got a test case on three wells or something. Yes. You're refusing to pay the federal gas. Blakeney is now making sounds about not paying his yes. tax. Yes. Doesn't look good, does it? Well, uh, I don't understand why Ottawa will not finally realize that the West is uh, extremely concerned about this whole energy situation. Uh, I think it's the first time in history that Alberta, Saskatchewan and British Columbia have come together in such a solid fashion. We have now also got uh, approval from the uh, chairman of the uh, Council of Energy Ministers, who is uh, the Quebec minister, uh, to, hold, to uh, call together all of the energy ministers of Canada so that British Columbia, Saskatchewan and Alberta can put their case to them mm -hmm. to show uh, what we want to show, Jack, is that we're not in this uh, simply be because we're concerned about the West. This uh, program of the federal government is going to be a disaster for Canada, all of Canada. More with Bob McCollum, Minister of Energy, after the break. Bob McClellan, there's of course the bearer of the usual good tidings as our cost of living goes out of sight. They're holding back the 50 cents uh, that they're collecting for the federal government on your natural gas bills, but within six weeks he expects a recommendation <laughs> to increase the consumer gas prices. Will you hold off increasing consumer gas prices until the court decision is made on your refusal to pay the feds their money? Well, if we get a recommendation uh, to increase the prices, I don't think it would be prudent of us to uh, hold off in, in those terms, Jack. Uh, I think that, you know, a cheap energy policy is, is folly to begin with. Uh, uh, it's been proven, in, you know, even our ex experience as compared to the United States. Uh, we are the worst energy hogs in the world, and part of that reason is because we have the cheapest energy in the world. So we're going to have to pay more for our energy, including natural gas, but I think I can guarantee that natural gas will always be substantially below the costs of other fuels. In other words, politically, the government of B.C. will always subsidize to some extent natural gas. So long Even as we... Even though your policy is that you'd like to see oil prices go to 75% of the Chicago market. Well, we'd like to see our gas prices go to a certain percentage of the, uh, of the world market, too. But I think it will always be, uh, as far as this government is concerned, uh, somewhat below the price of uh, oil and... Uh, probably uh, below the price of electricity as well. On the energy budget program, are the feds being deliberately obstructive or provocative in any way? Yes, uh, they are as a matter of fact. Uh, well, the whole program is provocative. Uh, the intrusion into provincial uh, jurisdiction is pro provocative. Yeah, but what are they uh, doing now in setting well, up the programs which let, annoys you? Let me, let me just say what, you know, this program has a laudable objective, which is energy security for Canadians. The problem is that it will fail if it's kept in its present form. The first move that the federal government made to so-called uh, Canadianize the oil industry right. was to, through Petrocan, buy a company in British Columbia called Merritt Oil. Right. Merritt Oil is a totally owned Canadian company. Right. That doesn't Canadianize the industry. It may federalize the industry, Jack, but it does nothing to Canadianize. It spends a lot of money. It doesn't get us one more barrel of oil. It doesn't get us one more cubic foot of natural gas. The second thing they've done in, in terms of their oil compensation program is they've set up a new office in Calgary with 70 employees to administer a very small program uh, in terms of, uh, of its needs in the bureaucracy. And the third thing they've done, and we just, I just learned about this last night as a matter of fact, in terms of their off-oil conversion program, which is part of the program is the subsidization of pipelines for natural gas, uh, the conversion of, na uh, of from oil to natural gas, which was to have been a partnership program between the provinces and uh, Ottawa. Right. They have now decided it will be an Ottawa program. Ottawa will decide what the best conversion program is for British Columbia, for Quebec, for Saskatchewan, whether or not the needs are met, 
but uh, if the political needs of Ottawa are met, I suppose that will be the way the program Explain will Explain that to me a little bit. What, what do you mean a conversion program? Is well, this for the bureaucratic adjustment of oil supplies? No, this is for the con actual conversion, Jack, from, from the fuels which are most scarce to those which are not. Uh, uh, changing uh, uh, f uh, oil furnaces to gas furnaces, for instance, uh, which is a program which has been extremely successful in British Columbia already. In fact, the funny thing is that the government <coughs> is uh, stressing that program in BC at a time when we can't keep up to the conversions we've committed because we can't get tradesmen, for one thing. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a crazy well, idea. Now it's now be... all going to be run from Ottawa. No partnership with the provinces whatsoever. With an office in Calgary? No, the, I don't know where their office will be in, on t in Ottawa, I guess, for this one. Now, Chevron this morning have applied to the feds for some offshore oil drilling permission. Does that put your nose out of joint? No, uh, because at the present time, uh, offshore is, uh, is still a jurisdiction of the feds, although there's some, you know, there's some ju jurisdictional dispute there. But the federal government has a moratorium on offshore drilling you know, on the West Coast. And what Chevron has asked uh, is that that moratorium be lifted so that we can get to work and put some environmental guidelines in so that Chevron can go to work and uh, drill offshore. So therefore, you're not in the same position as Peckford, who says, I want all the oil from the offshore Newfoundland fields. No, Brit yes, we are. British Columbia has made its position very clear. We feel that the resources offshore belong to the provinces. <clears throat> Joe Clark uh, was ready to give them to us at the time he was defeated. And now uh, we have a couple of court cases pending on offshore resources and also uh, it's, it's part of the constitutional debate as well. But we don't want to hold anything up as, because of the, that, because Chevron uh, believes they've taken over the old, old leases from Shell in the, uh, on offshore, and they believe that there's a tremendous potential there for uh, uh, just uh, uh, massive uh, amounts of natural gas at least, and perhaps some oil. You mean a kind of North Sea drilling program? Yes. Do you want to see it? Oh, I think uh, we, we're, we have to look for uh, the sources of our energy security wherever we can, and if we can, uh, if we can fulfill all the environmental requirements, yes, I think we should uh, be moving ahead there. Speaking of environmental requirements, Dome and others are presently, I think, at your door, seeking guidelines or something to put up a big LNG port, liquefied natural gas. Where yeah. does that stand now? Well, uh, Dome and uh, some Japanese partners have put forward a, a very, very preliminary proposal to us. Uh, they have not yet applied uh, for, uh, officially, uh, for uh, uh, either environmental guidelines or anything else. Uh, I expect they will, uh, but at the moment it's uh, quite preliminary. Although uh, Dome has its customers lined up for part of, the, uh, part of the proceeds, and it has its partners all lined up. Mind there you, are many others. Uh, there are about four others. LNG is a great hazard, isn't it? I see stories that, you know, it's like an atomic bomb of an LNG place goes up. They've been shipping LNG uh, all over the world for many, many years, Jack, and I'm not aware of any major disasters ever happening. Certainly it's a commodity which has to be ca handled very carefully, and certainly it's a commodity which uh, cannot be considered in this province without the strongest environmental guidelines. But I believe that we can develop uh, that as, as the first step towards our major petrochemical industry in this province. Mind you, you don't seem to be fighting, despite what you said this morning, relationships with the feds don't seem to be brutal enough to make you want to join the West Federation. No, uh, that's, that's not my position, although I would take issue with your opening comment in which you called me a committed federalist. I think I'm a committed Canadian. I'm a committed uh, Canadian in terms of the kind of constitutional arrangement we have now in which the provinces are equal partners with the federal government. I don't consider that to be federalism. That's what, that's what uh, Mr. Trudeau wants right now, is a federalist state in which the provinces are stripped of their power. N I don't believe in that. Next question. If Trudeau gets his way, will that turn you into some kind of separatist? I've never considered being a separatist, ever. Uh, I believe in, uh, I, as I do in my personal life and in my political life, in fighting for the things I believe from within the system, and I intend to continue to do that. I do not want, though, however, to, to see Mr. Trudeau uh, get away with the changes he wishes to make in the basic fabric of Canada uh, uh, under the terms he's laid down at this present time. If Trudeau gets his way, therefore, will you become a non-federalist? Well, I'm not a federalist to begin with. I'm a Canadian. I believe in the partnership of Canada and its provinces. Trudeau can does you, not any longer. Bob, can you ever see yourself becoming any no. kind of Christie-type separatist? No. And I don't think it'll ever become necessary. Don't you think we'll just muddle through for another 10 years, fighting and squabbling and tearing each other apart, and come to another uh, middle-of-the-road compromise? Well, I suppose we might, but that's not so bad. We've come through uh, well over 100 years on that basis where, uh, you know, you're going to have to have squabbles with the federal government if the provinces have equal power. 
And uh, that's not bad, in my opinion. It's uh, provided us with uh, one of the best damn countries in the world, and I think we continue to, can continue to have that. My thanks to Bob McClellan. The next man up is Elmer Knutson from West Fed. What do I do with him? <laughs> what do you think of him? It's your show, Jack. What do you think well, of him? Well, I've met... You're um, an old radio man. I'm an old radio man. I met Mr. Knutson for the first time today, and, uh, and uh, he's a handsome-looking gentleman, and I'm sure you'll have an extremely well, interesting program. When I see program. Clancy, the old social credit <laughs> PR man with him, I begin to worry. Oh. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, social credit are regarded as politically unstable. Oh, Jack, uh, you know, if you read, if you believe everything you hear on television or read in the newspapers, you're in deep trouble, as you know, but uh, Especially the television. social credit party uh, does not believe in separatism. We are Canadians, but we believe in a very strong Canada with equally strong provinces. It's the only way we can survive. Fight to the better end within the democratic process and let the majority have their way. Yes. 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 My thanks to Bob McClellan. And he's not going into the radio business. He's staying <laughs> as the Minister of Energy in the B.C. Cabinet. Next, Elmer Knutson of West Fed. I decided not to go. <clears throat> to make Elmer Knutson of the West Federation feel at home, I put on my fleur-de-lis Quebec tie this morning, sent to me as a gesture by Premier Levesque of Quebec. Now, does that make you happy, Mr. Knutson? No, well, I, it looks pretty nice on that suit, you know. I mean, uh, you got blue all over the place. So I guess that's blue sky. Are you planning a separatist tie for West Federation? We're not separatists. Now, come on now, Mr. Knutson. <laughs> West Federation has got a logo which shows the four western provinces apart. Yeah. Now, if you're not separatist, what are you? We're, f uh, we're trying to uh, form a Western Federation. Now, that's not separation. That's Western Federation. It has been no federation in Canada. So, therefore, we're going to start the process. Now, just give me that again. A Western Federation. Four provinces. Yes. Run from where? Well, run from the west where it should be. Not run from Ottawa? No, well, uh, that's the problem. Ottawa is trying to become a unitary state in this country, and they're trying to uh, revert uh, the provinces back to colonies, and they're driving us to the position where we have to try to be protect ourselves, and by protecting ourselves, we have to begin federating so at least we can speak as one voice out west here. I don't want to be unkind to you, but, and I'm really trying to be an honest reporter. You want the four western provinces and the two territories to confederate. Yes. Now, what does that mean? Well, to confederate, uh, you've heard about the co-ops. Uh, in order to be a, 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 to confederate anything, you have to be separate, sovereign, independent uh, communities or provinces or colonies or whatever you call it. I've got that now. A and you have to then have an agreement amongst yourselves to agree to forming a, a federal uh, government and you give up some of your authority to that federal state or pro uh, government in order to... Uh, to run the, uh, the international affairs or whatever. I've got it. You want to dismantle the present federal state, which you think is going unitary, and set up a new collection of states, one group of which will be the four western provinces who might speak to Ottawa on the odd occasion. Uh, well, I don't like the way you put it because it's not true what put you Put it said. your way. Put okay. it your way. Because, uh, you see, I'm quite honest about it. Yeah. I regard you. Matter of fact, aren't you in total sympathy with Christie? for the Western Canada concept, the guy who got all the thousands of people out on the prairies. Mm -hmm. are, you in, are you in sympathy with Christie? Well, I, uh, I have the same problems, or we can enunciate the same problems, the same wishes of the West, but he wants to form a unitary state, and of course that's the same thing as Trudeau wants to form. And we're not in, uh, we don't uh, address ourselves to that because we say the provinces and provincial governments and the regional differences out here are, uh, are normal and, uh, and they are the title holders to the property and therefore we want to work through the, through the title holders of the country, which are the provinces really. Now look, I, I, want, I don't want to misrepresent you in any way, shape or form. Let me do this again. West Federation yes. is your brainchild. Not mine alone. Uh, I wrote the letter in the first place, and a lot of people came. I got 3,800 letters in six weeks, and uh, it's been then a committee from then on, and uh, we have formed it together as a. All right. So I'm the founder, but our So you've writer. got West Federation, the four Western provinces, right. separate, equal, and sovereign. 
Yes. Forget the territories for the moment. Right. Would form a confederation. Right. How would they break the political and administrative tax chains with Ottawa? How would they do that? Well, uh, that, that would be up to a constituent assembly once it's decided. You see, this is a country without a constitution. So the first thing you have to do if you form a federation is to, have, is to get a constitution. Now, Canada don't have a constitution, never did have. And, uh, and, and now Trudeau, and that's the problem, is trying to establish a dusty old British North America Act that was designed and written by the colonial department in Great Britain as our constitution. And the Constitution, as you know, Jack, belongs to the people. It's instructions by the people to the government on how it shall operate. So therefore, you say that the British Parliament has no right whatsoever, even if it's asked by Trudeau, to send this old piece of paper back because it doesn't matter. That's right. In other words, all the British link is of no concern. No, at the Statute of Westminster, they, uh, they raised the, all of the provinces to equal status with, Canada, with, uh, with uh, Great Britain and dissolved the government, which was the Governor General. Question, is it Trudeau you hate or the Liberal Party? Which one do you hate the most and why? Well, uh, I, I have absolutely no use for Trudeau, never did have. And he why? Is, well, for the simple reason that I have read all his books. I, uh, I knew of him when he was writing in the City Libra. I knew when he was writing in the Lea's Resemblement. I know that he w has called himself a citizen of the world. I know that he has Marxist uh, uh, overtones and, uh, and his policy is for social democracy. I've known all these for a long time and he's systematically doing exactly what he said he was going to do. This guy hasn't lied to the Canadian people. But the Canadian people have never believed him, apparently, because it's well documented of all of his ex uh, es escapades. Okay, describe him politically from your point of view. Put what? a label on Trudeau from your point of view. He's a left wing, uh, so far at the left that even the NDP don't want him or didn't want him. He's left of the NDP. Right. You wouldn't say he was a communist. Well, I don't know if he's ever been a, a communist, but I'd say he was, has Marxist uh, leanings, that's for sure. And you don't trust him? I don't trust him for five seconds. Well, how is, has he been able to con all the big money boys on Bay Street and uh, the conservative elements of the Liberal Party? How has he been able to hold this incredible drag and come back from the political dead after Clark committed suicide and take the reins of government again? Oh, well, as far as I'm concerned, it was all planned. He didn't ever did intend to resign. I mean, he, that was just a ploy. And they, then they, they, they got this uh, budget thing going, and he come back. I, I think, it, uh, you know, we give the credit of this to McEachern and a few of those guys there, but he masterminded it, Trudeau. Machiavellian. Yes. No doubt about it. None. Next, I want you to convince me to become, well, I don't know what you want me to become. A separatist. No, no. The no. thing is that we are being forced by Ottawa to make some hard decisions. We do not want to be a colony of Ottawa any longer. Or of Britain. Or of Britain. Elmer Knutson, West Federation, after the break. Knutson. I tend to shout at people, as you know. Yeah, well, I might shout back, you know. Well, no, feel free to shout back. <laughs> Equal time is yours for the taking. But, you know, I'm one of the new Canadians. I came here 34, 35 yeah, I know, years ago. I, I know, and you haven't even learned how to speak Western Canadian English yet. I get by. See. <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, to me, the prospect or the thought of becoming even your type of quasi-separatist is unthinkable. So I want you to convert me. Tell me why I, Jack Webster, who may have a little influence in public opinion, should join WestFed. I mean, I want specifics. Well, I tell you, Jack, it's just exactly this way. Uh, and, uh, and it's a little different out in BC because you had your national, natural resources ever since 1871. In the prairies, we didn't have it. In prairies, uh, in Alberta, Manitoba, and even though Manitoba joined a long time before Man uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan, we didn't get our natural resource rights until 1930. And, until, and th until then, we were very, very poor. We had no revenue because Ottawa was, uh, uh, was taking all our revenue for our land and natural resources. And Saskatchewan went into, into the uh, Depression years with about a $94 billion debt. So there's been dissatisfaction for many, 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 many years in the prairies. Not in the young generation. I mean, the, we've had an affluent post-war all through the West, roughly speaking, have we oh, not? Yeah. Certainly in the past 20 years. 
yes, but... Uh, and when Leduc was brought in, was it not the federal government who subsidized it and helped it all the way before Alberta's fields were developed? No. No? They wouldn't give us any money at all. We had to go to New York and Texas and all the other places in order to get money to drill the oil and find it. You know, God hid that stuff pretty good. Barrett said that, you know, that we got the oil there because God put it there, and that's right. But he hid it a damn good, too, and it took a lot of Alberta know-how in order to find it down there, and it's going to take even more to find what's left because it's getting scarcer. But the thing is that's causing the, the alienation of the West. We've gone along with the flag issue. We've gone along with bilingualism. We've gone along with, with that. I'm doing a lot of things but when they start to get to the position where they say that they are going to draft a constitution and they are going to uh, retake the control of our natural resources again and they're going to tell us what we're going to price and they're going to be here in BC and they're going to tell you about your forest products pretty soon they're already trying to take your gas revenue and take that control of it and we're heading towards a unitary state and Jack I tell you in a country 4,000 miles wide and with a little bunch of people over there in Ottawa who never were a colony telling us what we got to do across this country, I reject it. Would you agree with me that the reason people are against the government is largely because it's a hate Trudeau thing and not necessarily a hate Ottawa thing? Well, he's accentuated, and you've got you to address the question to Trudeau because, after all, he's been the prime minister for 12 bloody years in this country, and he has changed the Liberal Party from a traditional Western party to now a Quebec-based party and with some of uh, his Ontario friends over there. And the, everybody, all of us, with the Conservative and ND party and social credit and everything, go into every, every election with a 60 or 75 to 80-seat handicap. There is no bloody way that we're you're ever going to have any say in the decision-making process of this country. Because of Quebec? Because of the power base that Trudeau has established in this country. Would you, like, would you like to see Quebec out of confederation so that there'd be an evener balance in the English-speaking parts of the country? Well, I think that for the rest of the country, if Quebec had have separated on the 20th, the whole rest of Canada would have been better because Trudeau wouldn't have had that base. But what's the difference between you, therefore, and the aims and aspirations of Quebec? Quebec has a right to do just exactly what we have. Ontario has the right to do exactly what we're doing. Nova Scotia has the right. But Nova Scotia and the Maritime Provinces, Atlantic Provinces, have been raped so many years ago. They were wealthy provinces at one time. And Central Canada, Ontario and Quebec raped them many, many years ago, so they're so poor they can't do anything about to it. To many now. people it looks, I mean, the separatist movement, or the quasi-separatist movement... They're not even quasi. We're trying to establish want, a voice in the Canadian scene. You want to change the... Con you want to scrap all the present arrangements. Well, yeah, because we have no constitution, and we want a constitution designed by the people in the West. You want a separate constitution for the four Western provinces? We want them to begin the federating process, write that constitution, and then if at some later date, after the Constituent Assembly has done this, and some of the rest of the provinces say, hey, we like that first Canadian ever constitution, you know, let's talk about it, then the Constituent Assembly could go ahead and do it. When you talk about the four Western provinces and the Western Federation, would you expect the other provinces to have the same type of freedoms from Ottawa, Ontario? Well, uh, they can do whatever they like, but Ontario is Ottawa just about, as far as I'm concerned. Under your West Federation, who would look after defense? That would be up to the federal government which we establish. Which but they would have limited authority as far as I'm personally The concerned. new federal government? Yes. Where would the capital be? I don't know. That would have to be decided by the Constituent Assembly and by the people elected uh, to decide that issue in Canada. We're talking about the new capital of the West Federation? Yes. Where would that be? I don't know. That would have to be decided, like I say, by the Constituent Assembly. See, I don't know if you understand our whole program. No, We're, I don't. Okay. Because when you talk about the West Federation and a new constitution and a new capital, I mean, I'm not stupid. That's separation. Well, uh, separation from what? Separation from Canada as a nation. When did Canada become a nation? 1931, Statute of Westminster. Who made it that way? Can, uh, a, can, a, can a British government create a federation in Canada? It did. No, it didn't. What, it's worked for, since when? 1867? Well, well uh, 1867, we had a governor general who was the corporation's soul until 1931. But you can't turn around and tell me that we don't have a constitution. We've got the BNA Act, which has been the effective constitution. It was a British statute, yes. It was uh, for, uh, for a, a division of powers of the local and central government under a governor general. The constitution was the letters patent issued to the governor general. Technicalities. Do you know that know. in Patella's time in British Columbia, 
that BC threatened to secede unless oh. Ottawa stepped in with social welfare payments. Well, uh, I suppose they had taxed the In those days, when it, no, when it was poor, you said, yeah. they said to Ottawa, unless you give us more money, we'll secede. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying, and from oil rich Alberta, if you take any of our money, we'll separate. Oh, yeah, you can't say that. Boy, we're, we've, we've, uh, we're selling our oil and energy at 40%, or 40% of the going price. We're not asking for even a 75% today. We're saying that we work, want to work towards 75% by 1984. Uh, we're saying to them, at least pay us a, a reasonable price. But no, they, these, uh, Trudeau's more interested in that north-south connection now. And he'll go down to Mexico and pay them the full price. And then, of course, they're going to get a lot of our dollars. So now he has a trade mission down there. And they're trying to find out how we, can we get those dollars back. So they're more interested in trade north-south than the east-west connection. We kind of liked the east-west connection. We were a little unhappy with it. Uh, but, but when his train... A little unhappy when he, with it. Yeah, well, when, when his train did, changed off and decided to go via Paris and Moscow and the third world nations and north and south and everything, when we got that western section, we kind of dropped it off at the Manitoba border and we said, hey, just a minute now, if that's the way you're going to go rather than the real east-west situation, we're going to unhook that train. So we unhooked it and you know, the east just kept right on and going. They never even bothered to wave goodbye. Would you like to see Ontario really suffer because of a shortage or the nation suffer because of a shortage? when if uh, Lougheed carries out his promise to cut oil production? No, I think I'd like to see him make a deal with them that we will sell our oil at 20 or 30 or 40 percent below world prices, providing they will send us all of their manufactured goods at the same percentage discount off of world prices. You're not very keen on the way Ontario has acted, are you? No, because the power is in the center, and the power is Ontario and Quebec. And I don't want the West to get raped like man maritime provinces. Would did. your West Federation, if you ever get to this magic day, would it have a central parliament for itself? It have federal, because we were going to federate. You see, we have regional it's a federation of the four provinces. Yes, yes. Nothing to do with Ottawa. Well, uh, no, not in the initial stages, at least. Ottawa would be a separate country. Well, they left us, yeah. What do you mean they left us? They well, may have annoyed you. They may be stealing your money and Canadianizing your industry. And but writing a constitution, <coughs> there's only two ways that a constitution can be formed, and that is either by the people or a dictator. And that little dictator sitting in Ottawa right now, he says that I have the authority to bring uh, to establish <coughs> a constitution in here, that old dusty BNA Act, uh, and he's going to establish it here, he's going to change it, and he's going to impose it. Now, do you want some dictator to impose a constitution on you and tell you you can't smoke anymore on CBC or whatever the heck it is? Doesn't he have a majority in a thing called the House of Commons? That's part of the power structure. That's why, why uh, until the structure has changed, we will be a colony of Ottawa longer than Canada was a colony of Great Britain. Has democracy failed in Canada because of Trudeau's and the Liberals' power base in Quebec? Uh, democracy has failed because of the structure, and uh, whether Clark was there or Broadbent or whoever, it would still be the same. So we have to change the structure in this country or we will be that colony. And Trudeau, of course, knows all of this and he is moving fast to that unitary state. Do I hear a rumor that you're going to amalgamate with Christie's Western Canada concept? Never. Why not? Because he wants to be a political party. And political... What are you? We are dealing with a political issue, but uh, build, nation building and constitution writing mm -hmm. comes before political parties. Give yourself a political label. What are you? Personally, mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a conservative. I was a liberal at one time, but the whole political spectrum moved to the left and uh, I stayed where I was. You're not, Westfed is not a political party? Never. Collection of industrialists and right wingers? Uh, no, center of the political spectrum, I would say. Conservatives are even to the right or to the left of the uh, center, what, what we used to know as the center. Yeah, you still haven't convinced me why the man in the street should join you. I mean, specific. Yeah. Well, I tell you, as far as I'm personally concerned. Try and convince the callers. Okay. Elmer Knutson, how old are you, Elmer? I'm t uh, too old. Oh, come on. Well, I'm starting in the 60s. Yeah, so am I. 
So don't feel too old. No, I'm not, I'm not too. I don't feel too old. You know, that's just mind over matter or something like that. And if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Elmer Knutsen. I'm the founder of the Western Federal Association, which claims how many members? Well, we know we have over 20,000. Oh, 20? I thought it was 50. No, no, no. I never said 50. I, 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 people... How much of your own money have you put into it? About 20,000. About $20,000. How much have you got in your tin box now for the Federation? Right at the moment, we've got about $35,000, but we have about a million dollars promised right at the moment. Oh, from oil companies, of course. No, siree. They're the ones who'll benefit. No, they have. You know something? We haven't got one dollar from an oil company. We have gotten a thousand dollars from a man who happens to be connected with the oil industry, but hasn't he got rights too? No, the basic is comes from. Will the you accept large sums of money from oil companies who are paranoid about Trudeau's Canadianization? Well, I think that we will uh, oil accept it from people in the oil industry, but not from companies. No limit on the amount of donation. No, no. You want four million? We're going to get four million. By when? By, uh, oh, maybe August. And use it for? The, uh, try to convince the people of Western Canada that we have to become a, uh, a joint force out here to force Ottawa. And to sever the connection to Ottawa. No, 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 to force Ottawa to listen to the West and stop their colonization of, of Western Canada. Elmer Knudsen, West Fed, after the break. Your calls. <laughs> I'm not going to run one of the old-fashioned polls on whether or not you're a separatist or a quasi-separatist or a West Fed supporter or a Christie supporter. I want you to make short, sharp comments without the usual endearments uh, to either of us or ask questions of Elmer, Elmer Knutsen. It is Knutsen, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. I'm the son of Knut. Son you know, of Canute. You know how the Norwegian names are. It, they take the f father's first name and add son to it. So it's Hans' son, or William's son, or John's son, or Canute's son. Fancy that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, of course, you came from Ireland, didn't you? I'm the son of Webb. <laughs> Webb's there. Okay, straight up to Elmer. Go yes. ahead, please. Mr. Knutson. Yes. I've got two questions. Right. I'll ask them. They're short, they're succinct. And uh, I'll uh, hang the phone up and listen to your answers. Number one. Does West Fed have a constitution drawn up? And if not, how are we supposed to vote or go along with them unless we know what they're going to do? Number two, how are you going to arrange for the aboriginal rights and let them get their share of their natural resources? Thank, Thank you. you. Two questions. Do you have a constitution? Uh, yes, we have a constitution, and, uh, and our constitution is very simple, that we want to... Uh, put pressure on the provincial governments to agree to forming a Western Federation, number two, to get uh, cons uh, uh, have elections and get uh, people elected to a constituent assembly to draft a constitution. And to answer the second one, we hope the natives and all the other groups are along in uh, and get members in that constituent assembly and that's where the constitution of the country will be decided. In other words, you will recognize Aboriginal rights to oil in Alberta. We are not, uh, we, we think that the Western people, when they get together in a constituent assembly, will do just that, yes. You don't think you'll get fighting between Alberta and B.C., <laughs> no, no, Manitoba no. and Saskatchewan? Well, that's why we say that we have four regions and uh, we want our regional governments and we recognize them. And that's the difference between Christie and us. We just don't want to be a political party. We want no association with a political party of any kind, you including his. Nothing to do with Christie? None. Never? Never. Ever? Ever. For sure? For sure. Did he get his big crowd because of your image? Yes, because he announced all over uh, uh, the Alberta that there was an amalgamation between us, and he hadn't even spoken to us, and we had utterly rejected that a long time ago. Go ahead, please, to Alma Knutson. Yeah, Knutson. Yes. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, some of them already been asked by Mr. Webster. Just ask your questions. Uh, is it not a fact that you are create you along with some others are creating a lot of confusion uh, and uh, misleading the people in the country? Okay, fair enough. Are you confusing well, people? Uh, well, I think we're making people think. I certainly hope we can confuse them long enough so that they will start to realize the situation and and uh, probably tell us where we're wrong if we are wrong. But we want to have a Western voice. Go ahead from Victoria. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Jack. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I think Vancouver Island should separate from the country, and I say this a bit uh, tongue-in-cheek, but we could, you know, grab the naval base up at Comox, and then Esquimalt, we could, you know, take the ships over. Yeah, where does it end? Why shouldn't we separate? And, you know, and we could run who, everything ourselves. Who the heck said I was going to talk about separation? We're, we're talking about federation. Well, I'm talking, are we one country or aren't we? And well, I, I'm saying that we have never federated in this country, and I challenge anybody to show me a federation document. Well, I, what I'm saying, in effect, is... We fought two wars as a nation. Yeah, and we, we were... We fought the Second World War as a nation. We were in the Korean War as a nation. That's show me that makes us a nation. But are we a country or are we not a country, and that's what I'm saying. Well, what I'm saying is legally, have we ever federated? In and Alberta. What are you saying is what? Legally, have we ever federated, and uh, when did we become that country? I know that in 1967, we were marching across this country and saying, this land is your land, and this land is my land. But a lot of things happened after 1967, and one of them was Trudeau got on the scene, and he knew that we hadn't federated, and he is trying to take control of this country from Ottawa, and we utterly reject that. Well, and if he's going to keep on going that way, well, then we're going to do our own thing out here. We're not going his direction. It's Trudeau that's a problem. Can well, I... because he controls the Liberal Party with the support of Ontario and Quebec. Okay, well, look, at when I, well, you know, the reason why that is, is that's where the people are. Let's face it, it's a, it's a democracy. Yeah, but that's what uh, a democracy can work wrong? without having the power all in one place. I mean, in the United States, for instance, they have the Senate that has two seats in Rhode Island and two seats in, in Illinois. But uh, so that sometimes the, uh, the power of the majority can be very vicious, and that's exactly what's happened in this country for 113 years. You, if you, you talk like this in the United States, you might be faced with federal marshals. Well, uh, no, 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 no. You've got freedom of speech in this country and in the United States, I'm, I, I know, and I hope that we can keep it here in this country. But the way it's going, uh, uh, one of these days we won't have it. No state can separate in the United States, I'll tell you. They, but they have federated. You know, anyway, they have uh, federated. Alberta, you know, no, okay, good enough. Go ahead, please. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. This, this gentleman has made me so angry and so disgusted. Thank God he's in the minority. He has disassociated himself from Britain and from Ottawa. How does he feel about joining the United States? Because most of us would not join the United States. Well, we think the United States are real nice people. We want to have dealings with them and everything, but we don't want to live in their house. We want to build our own. Fair enough. She told you off, didn't you? <laughs> you disgusted her. <laughs> yes. From Armstrong, B.C. Yes. Speak up. You're with me, Jack? Yes, I'm with you. Go ahead. You're killing me with the capital gains tax. I don't know how he got in. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm an ex-Albertan. I lived there for 20 years, and I can certainly agree with you, Mr. Knudsen. Thank you. And I don't know how Mr. Webster sits there as a host and doesn't even know enough about the history of Canada to know that the uh, federal government never partook of the Leduc explorations. Uh, he has heard that so many times, and still he's very dull, and he can't learn. Uh, I was there when Mr. Manning tried. I know all about it. Mooney! But Mr. Webster is a socialist. Did you say Mooney? Pardon? Did you say Bill Mooney? No, I didn't say Bill Mooney. Oh. I'm a socialist. I said Mr. Webster. And I think that uh, Mr. Webster is a socialist. And he wouldn't agree with you even if you were 200% uh, right. Well, are you talking to me? I don't think he's that bad. He's kind of a rough customer, but I can be rough too. So we're getting along pretty good here. And one of these days, one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to convince him that he should uh, to speak for us. Uh, Ma'am, you're just delightful. I don't think I'm a socialist. What I am is I'm again them all. I'm again everybody, and I sit here and I try and provoke people. Some people I can provoke easier than others. Please learn the facts. So that when uh, we speak about Canada history, you will know what we're talking about. Sorry, ma'am. Can't help it. I went to a school in the old country, and the only thing I did was learn to read and write. Well, then believe some Thank of the Thank you, my dear. No, enough. I'm not going to be insulted anymore this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd just like to have your address. You have a new, uh, you have a new member. 
Well, we have an address here in BC. I just don't know the, uh, the address right offhand, but uh, I tell you, if you come to the meeting tonight at, uh, at 8 o'clock at the Hyatt Regency, we'll tell you the whole rest of the story as well. How much are you charging for the meeting? Nothing, but we're going to take up a collection because we want to raise part of that $4 million tonight. This is where you've got the big oil man. Well, we're going to have a, a, a man that happens to be in the oil business, but he is a Canadian just as well as I am and you and everybody else, and he has a right to use some of his money to support his own cause, I would think. Carl Nickel. Carl Nickel. And he's How big is your hole tonight? Well, it's about 2,000 people, but I think uh, we're going to have to probably turn away a few. Have you papered the house? I mean, Clancy, your PR man's an old expert at papering houses. Oh, Are you bringing in buses? Well, I don't know. He's done a pretty good job, you know, for us. But uh, we have uh, we have trouble teaching him some of the things because, you know, he was a former social creditor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trouble with that. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wazzer, good morning. 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 I just asked Mr. Knudsen there, in the event that he was successful, and by the way, I'm, I'm for him and what he says, I, I, I agree with him. He'd have a new member here, too. But, but in the event that he came through with it, how would that affect the old age pensions and the Canada pension as we now have them? Oh, I, I, this is I, known as the Quebec that. syndrome. I just love that question because a whole bunch of people in this country, you know, we have bank accounts and savings accounts and all that kind of jazz, you know, we, we think that that's our money. And a lot of the old people think that there's a great big stack of money sitting in Ottawa someplace and when they get to be 65 years of age, they're going to start to draw from that fund. Well, I have a surprise for you. There is no money in any fund in Ottawa. They have a promise to pay you some money when you get to a certain age or if you have a handicap or whatever, but it comes out of direct taxation that day that it's paid to you. It doesn't come from an already saved account. What would be different with your West Fed central financing? Well, of course, uh, I, I am from Alberta, and I know that situation a little bit better, but Alberta has contributed over $30 billion in the last four or five years to the equalization payments or whatever. And I tell you, if we had that 30, we'd be able to double, triple, and everything else, the old age pensioners. So I'm sure that we'll be able to take care of them without any problem in the West here. Now, what's your address? Well, so, well I tell you, it's... No, I want to give you an address. It's quite obvious that yeah. I'm, I'm not in total sympathy with you. Well, I, uh, I'm going to work on you, though, well, you're not, uh, and no, I'll get the address. See, you've got to give me concrete reasons why I should be a separatist. You would tell me. Yeah, but you see, I, all I've you would tell first, me is that my, tax, my taxes would go down, my earnings would go up. There's nothing except You're, money involved in your philosophy. Oh, no, 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 wait now. The main thing, the last three straws to break the camel's back was the energy package, the Constitution, and this last budget with $105 billion worth of debt and a government overspending like nobody's business, already spending 47 cents of every dollar of GNP, and we're, we're going farther and farther into debt. We're going to be bankrupt, and, the, and so... Our, our cost to the ordinary Joe, the cost of living will drop 45% and the dollar will go up uh, about 50%. That'll be bad for the lumber business. No, it won't, because at least the dollar that they do get will buy a lot more stuff than that 75 cent dollar. More calls money. to Elmer Knudsen after the break. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't cry the blues about all the oil rigs fleeing Alberta. Well, of course, that's one of the problems. Uh, you know, there's about 43 oil rigs that have gone in the last little while, and, of course, about 40,000 jobs that have been lost. Uh, and we are r fast approaching an energy crisis in the world, and, and Canada was trying to go for, uh, for self-sufficiency by 1990. And with the policies that we're going now, we're going to be all uh, walking behind horses like I did when I was a young fellow. Because uh, of Trudeau's uh, uh, left-wing socialism nationalization. Well, yeah, he said calls it Canadianization, but I call it socialization or nationalization, and it's an excuse to make this a unitary state. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Morning. Look, I'm a Canadian. I was born in Alberta, spent too much of my life in B.C. and a few years in back east. And I'd like to say just two things about this whole silly business. One, um, why should we charge ourselves for our own resources at a bat-breaking price? I see no point in that. Point number two, we've been a nation. We've acted as a nation. We've accepted ourselves as a nation. We have a national anthem. We've got people who are veterans who have lost their lives for this country. We've made laws and, and we've uh, paid taxes. If we act in, as a nation by custom, we are a nation if nothing else. 
So no, no silly comment saying that we are not a country can make it anything else. I, so it's a point, of, it's really a business of saying, uh, Mr. Knudsen saying, everybody's crazy but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I think you've got to rec recognize that a country has to have a constitution. And a constitution, everybody is saying that the BNA Act is that constitution, except, uh, 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 except the, uh, the people. And, uh, Britain doesn't they, have a constitution, so that Great Britain is not a country. Well, so the no, Union has a constitution. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... Uh, Britain doesn't have a constitution. Oh, it has a constitution. I think the Magna Carta was a pretty good basis of a constitution. Well, no, that was a right-wing document, document written by a bunch accepted. of farmers and barons. It's the basis of democracy for the West. We've had the right uh, to make okay, our Okay, ma'am, you've made a good point. She really has. And you can't answer that point. We are now a nation. We may be in trouble, okay. but we're still a nation. Okay, all right. I, I'll say it then, oh, Jack. All right, we were a nation. And we are, if you want to say it now. But we're gradually being broken up by Trudeau, and we're going to become a unitary state with a one-party government. And uh, we have been that for 38 of the last 44 years. And, and we are losing our rights every day, and I refuse to cha let him change this country. If you had a good right-wing Tory government in Ottawa, top heavy with MPs from the West, no, no. and 75% of the Chicago price, you wouldn't be forming a West Fed. Uh, yes, it's deeper than that. It's constitution and freedoms and rights as well that are being taken away from us by the East. Go ahead from Vernon, 5525. Go ahead from Vernon. Where are you? Hello. Yes, that's you. Speak up. Hello. Oh, it's, sorry, old. have got the wrong one. It's Revelstoke and two. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Knudsen. Yes. I'd like to know, uh, let you know that uh, I agree, agree with you 100%, and I uh, hope you have a, an office set up here uh, in the interior somewhere. And I'm also a federal servant. I'd like to join your party, but hopefully under your uh, federation, you will liberate uh, the federal service and let us run politically again. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, the, the office... Uh, Never mind, I promised to put up for a short, sharp glimpse. Your address from Vancouver. Oh, okay. You'll just confuse people if you give it now. Okay. Much obliged. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Can I have your address? I'll put it up on the screen, unfortunately, but I will do. Hold on. Hey, just go away and watch the screen. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes. yes. Good morning. Oh. I have, I'm behind you 99%. I have one question and one piece of advice. Uh, you're doing a lot of harm by talking this federating talk. Leave that to lawyer. Just... If you can't call us a separatist movement, call us an independent movement, okay? My question is, will you give the people a referendum on immigration and the monarchy? Thank you. What was the question? We he want, said, we, first we, of all, call yourself independent. Yeah, well, that's what we're working for. We, it's everybody else that says we're separatists. We want an in independent federation out here. Will you give the and people a referendum on the monarchy? Yeah, well, uh, as far yes, we would be. Uh, and our referendum and our polls say that the people want to have some association with Great Britain and retain the monarchical system. And I agree 100% with that. You're a monarchist. Yes. God save the Queen. Yes. But not God save Ottawa. No. We have said that, uh, that maybe the second in line for the throne should be the prince of our, uh, our nation out here. Who's the prince of our nation? Well, uh, we should suggest that the second in line for the throne, you know, they have the prince of Wales, the first uh, in line for the throne, maybe the second in line should be the prince of uh, Western Canada. Are you serious? Well, I don't see what's wrong with it. I mean, they've, uh, that's some of our members have suggested. Prince Andrew? Yeah. He be the titular head of the new state of Westfed. Of Western Federation. Of the new state of Westfed? Yes. So you are a separatist? No, I'm not. You can fool me. Go ahead, I'm please. having trouble with you. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do, but... Uh... Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, two questions. When uh, this Westfed comes to be independent and B.C. and Saskatchewan and Manitoba re-elect the NDP, would you want to be ruled by socialists? <laughs> That's a good question, but uh, I don't think that we're going to change the, the, the nature of our, of our people. Uh, they're, they're still going to, uh, we're drifting towards an absolute socialist state now. Maybe if, uh, if we get a constitution that we want, and I don't see really that much difference between uh, Blakeney. I, I don't think he's a, a very, uh, I, I would be afraid of this Barrett, but uh, I, I think that bo most of the people in the West would want a, basically the same type of a constitution. And the, the drift to socialism will happen, and it's happening right, right now by Trudeau. Trudeau is taking us that direction fast. I must congratulate the caller on an excellent question. <laughs> yes, it was a good when question. When the houses of West Fed vote NDP, will you still want West Fed? Thank you, ma'am. One more. Yeah. Oh. 
Hope it's as good. If only Alberta becomes independent, uh, how would you handle using the air, road, and sea lanes for foreign power? Well, I don't think that Alberta would uh, would uh, be by itself. I'm pretty sure that Alberta and BC are, because we've got an awful lot of members in both provinces, and I, I think, think Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And if it did, it would be the socialist government. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you got to stick around, Alma. That was a good question. Yeah, I know. I like that. Next time questions. you see Lawhead, tell him we're still mad at him stealing PWA and moving out here to there. After the break. <laughs> Seems a nice enough fellow, you know. Just that I can't um, pin him down on precisely what West Fed is. I'm willing to believe you, you know, if I know precisely what you want. Well, I tell you, it takes it takes some thinking, and 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 it's hard to understand really. But really, what w is forcing West Fed to take place is that we are changing Canada, our Trudeau is, and he's taking away our freedoms that we established in this country. He is changing the government from a, a, a government of Parliament by a government of three wise men from Quebec and a coal miner from Cape Breton, and uh, uh, they're, they're, we're getting to a dictatorial state, and I will not accept that, and I'm going to try to prevent it happening in Canada, in Western Canada, if okay, I can. Okay, fair enough. Now, but it's the Constitution that really upsets you. Constitution? It's not the money. No, no, no. It's not the energy budget. No. It's not the tax on natural gas. No. It's not the fleeing of the oil rigs. It's the Constitution and the future of our children that is being threatened by a dictator in Ottawa, a power in the center. Go ahead, please. Mr. Webster. I'd just like to ask Mr. Knutson just how far he's prepared to take this Western uh, separatism of his. Uh, we have a perfect example of what happened in the United States when the South tried to secede from the North. If, would he go to war for this? Well, for, first of all, they, in the States is entirely different. They had formed a federation and agreement, a compact, and they had all gotten together, which is not true in Canada. And I don't think that if, if, Quebec, if Quebec had the right to, uh, to uh, do the, take their own destiny, and everybody said that Quebec had the right to do it if the question was phrased properly, and if they wanted to separate it, they voted to, to become a separate unitary state, that they had the right to do it. That, that now, right, only the NDP specifically said that. Yeah, no, Lahid, our true Hindu said it too. What were you saying, ma'am? I, I just, hello. Yes. yes. I just want to say this that I find that the West is far more separatist than Quebec ever knew how to be. And Mr. Knudsen, you're just adding to the problem. This is Canada, one country for God's sake, Canada. Mm -hmm. Without a constitution. Thank you, ma'am. Without a constitution, Mr. Knudsen, it's still one country. Oh, we're not trying to, uh, we, we're uh, trying to say to you that we don't intend to separate. We want to start the federating process. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Knudsen. Yes. Uh, did you fight for Canada in the last war? I was in the, in the Navy. Great. You sound like a great Canadian to me anyway, who is very eager to keep Canada free from the Trudeau crowd. That's good right. To you and good morning. Thank you very much, ma'am. See, you've got some friends out there. I've got lots of friends out from there. From Vernon, B.C., go ahead, please. You know? That's yes. you. You know? Yes. Speak up. Yes. Uh, tell me, who did you serve with in the last war? I was in the Navy. Who? In the Navy. In the Navy? Yes. For who? <laughs> For the the RCNVR. He was in the Royal Canadian Naval Volunteer Reserve. This is Canada, for God's sake. You guys should be all put in front of a firing squad. You and Christy and the whole damn bunch of you. Because that's where you belong. You're nothing but traitors to the country. If you... If well, you use your, it's, your a good, it's a good thing we got freedom of speech because you're entitled to your opinion too. Instead of trying to break it up, we'd all be a hell of a lot better. I'm trying to federate it. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. Is this me? That's you. I was wondering, you haven't let Mr. Newt... Carry on. I haven't... You haven't let Mr. Knudsen speak about the North yet. I was kind of curious what his place was for Yukon and the NWT in the new Federation. Well, we're going to invite them to, uh, to come in, we, uh, and we certainly want them. But uh, first of all, their situation is a little different. They were not covered by the Statute of Westminster. And uh, therefore, they're still territories, and I say they're still territories of Great Britain, because the Dominion government was really uh, the governor general, and he ceased to have his authority after 31. 
Okay, thank you very much. That doesn't make much sense. Right. Trying to tell me the Northwest Territories are colonies. Make maybe colonies of Ottawa, but they're not colonies of Britain. Well, it was, when, was, when was Ottawa a colony? We were a colony before 1867. Ottawa? No, Canada. Well, Ontario was, and that's a colony. Ottawa isn't Ontario, and it isn't Quebec. Ottawa is a city that they pay rent to the, to the colony of Ottawa, Upper Canada. Go ahead, please. What are you? Yes, uh, Mr. Webster? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, you know, there's been an awful lot of talk about socialism, but there hasn't been too much thought. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could consider uh, Nikita Khrushchev, who would be considered an expert on communism, mm -hmm. his statement was a socialist is a nothing but a communist without guts. A diplomat now would have put it a little differently. He would have possibly said the good intentions of a socialist are the paving stones on the road to communism. And when I look at what the free enterprise system has done for North America and the citizens of North America in a shorter time than all recorded history is done under socialism and other forms of government, then I'll stay the free enterprise way. And when I hear people talk about socialism, it's like going into a crap game with $10 Right. I guess I'm asked 25000 I gather your view is uh, that you... And you want to play against Trudeau's $10 and his socialism? It, well, it certainly doesn't ring very well. Are you in favor of West Fed? I certainly am. I'm Thank you, it. sir. Back after the break. Elmer Knutson. Yes. West Federation Association, now called West Fed. Looking for money from oil companies and anyone else to build up a $4 million war chest to fight Ottawa. Yes, we're, well, we're going to do it, and uh, already we have a thousand farmers who are prepared to give us a thousand dollars, and that each? means a mil mil thousand dollars each. That's a million bucks to start off with. You got the names on the list? Yes. Who organized this drive? Well, uh, we have had that offered to us many, many times. We said, well, we'll call for the money when we need it. At the moment, uh, we're starting a big advertising program about a month from now that will tell the West Fed story in great big block letters. Hey, is Stanley Roberts one of your supporters now? Stanley Roberts? Uh, he told me at one time he was a half a step away from me, and then he went and joined the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. I think he wants to be the next prime minister or something. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just one um what, Mr. Knutson, what do you think, firstly, of Hugh Harry? And um, is this what you're saying, that you want to create a Western government independent of Ottawa? But what happens if, um, like what we're creating in, um, in Canada, where Ontario and Quebec have the power, since they are major um, provinces, but what does happen... Um, if we create such a problem with Alberta, since they are quite a powerful province? Uh, that well, uh, that's, uh, uh, the thing is that the, the Constituent Assembly would decide it, uh, what powers it be, but our suggestion would be that if the, uh, the federal government in the West here is formed, that it should probably be 10 or 12 members from each province to, to heck with the population figure, because there are regional differences, and I think that they should all have equal input. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Newton. Yes. Starting with the Ottawa's ignoring Canada's internal east-west relations. Well, we have a similar situation here in B.C. where the south, the lower mainland, has the, the population density, but they don't have the resources that the north have. So what's to say that someplace like Fort Nelson, who has things really just to cry about, don't succeed from Canada or from British Columbia? I mean, where's this Catch-22 farce merry-go-round stop? Well, first of all, to answer that question, they would have absolutely no legal right to do it because the co colony of British Columbia is a identifiable and a legal entity. And they have the right uh, to, to work in their own territory. And Alberta has, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, all of, and Ontario and all of them have. In other words, uh, Fort Nelson can't separate from B.C. No, because it's a legal entity. It's just like a... a but the a, Western provinces can... Federate against and outside Ottawa. They have their own sovereignty areas. Go ahead, right. please. Yes? That's you, ma'am. Uh, very good. I think that the lowest form of human life is a traitor. Mr. Knudsen obviously is a traitor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. No comment from you. Go ahead, please. Is that me? That's you. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I've Mr. Knudsen uh, considered the fact that there are people who have been born in B.C., 
who will live in BC forever under the Canadian flag, and there is the chance of civil war. Well, I don't think that there is any possibility of civil war uh, because, uh, first of all, we have no compact, no agreement, no nothing. And if Quebec had the right to, uh, to do its own thing, Ontario has the right to do its own thing, I think we have too. Go ahead, please. Hello? That's you, ma'am. I would like to know if the Federation is going to start manufacturing their own goods here or are they going to ship back east to, to do the manufacturing back east when the Federation is... Made. Well, I tell you, we would never, uh, we'd never, I don't think, start our own manufacturing because we can buy on the open market uh, a lot cheaper than we can buy from uh, from East right now. Listen, how much time we got? Your public relations man gave you a document to give to me this morning. Are you going to give it to me? I think I should, Jack, because I, I think you're just a half a step away from being a charter member of West Fed, so I'll give it to you. Well, policy statement. I'm not a socialist, I'm not a liberal, I'm not a conservative, I'm not a social creditor, and I can't possibly impugn my integrity by being a member of WestFed. You can't, eh? I must be independent. Well, it's not an insult, it's a gesture. Now I'll give you your pound of flesh. Put up his address. Well, you see, you're fair about West Fed Association, thing. Box 9680, 349 West Georgia Street, Vancouver, BC, B6B4G3. Now, back in the close-up again, I'll tear up the card once more, in case you didn't get it right the first time. <laughs> West Fed card, torn up. I don't know what to wish. You're obviously a man of integrity and, and uh, good intentions, but you don't sit very well with me, Elmer. Well, I, I think if I was to talk to you a half an hour or something like that when you didn't have to be putting on a show, I could do a lot of convincing. You're accusing me of showbiz? Yes. Do you not think I'm genuine, sincere, honestly provocative? Yes, I think that's what I'm saying. That's, that's show business, isn't it? I think you're, that's part of your job. I think you look like a reasonable, sensible guy, too. and know no that, business, and, and, like and, show business. And, and, and that you're not that happy with the snowman. My thanks to Elmer, <laughs> Elmer Trudeau, Elmer Knutson. And I'll be back after the break. A little bit of a problem with Ski Okanagan, and on the telephone is Josie Lurich, who's the managing director of Ski Okanagan. I promised to give you a shot, Josie. What is it? Well, I should say that uh, we are a new marketing entity organized to promote winter tourism in the Okanagan area, and we're quite concerned that during the past 10 days, there's been a substantial decrease in skier flow from the coast to the interior. How many reservations were cancelled last weekend? Yes, well, out of a total of about 500 reservations, we've had 100 uh, cancellations. Why? Pardon me? Why did that happen? Well, we feel that it's, it's due to the poor publicity from the Vancouver media and that it's uh, certainly not justified. Are we been not telling the truth about ski conditions? Um, there have been gross generalizations on the ski conditions. How are the ski conditions in Ski Okanagan now? The ski conditions are great. It's good to excellent spring skiing. All over the place? Um, the seven mountains that we represent from Todd Mountain down to Osoyoos, yes. Josie, next, next week I'm going to have somebody on briefly from the Van and Winter Carnival and don't say we haven't tried to give you a hand. Okay. Thanks, Josie. Thank you very much, Jack. Bye. You were up skiing up there, weren't you? Yep. Tomorrow morning. Hugh Harris from Nationalist. the Nationalist Party of Canada. Uh, an New entity. He'll be an antidote to Knutson. 9 a.m. precisely. Oh.